Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome and thank you so much for stopping by. Hi, I'm Michelle and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this dress from beginning to end. The dish.com website inspired me to make this dress. I came across it and it caught my eye, so I immediately decided that this was the dress I'd like to challenge myself with. And Dish is selling this dress on the website for $179.99. And um, the challenge is to make this beautiful dress without busting the bank. I said this was going to be a challenge for me and well guys, I'm hoping to get this right because I'm um, at least on my first attempt because the fabric I'm draping in this video is the actual fabric for the dress. So um, I didn't use muslin or a toile um, beforehand. So please don't judge. I mean, I'm self-taught and I'm right now I'm just kind of going with the flow and if it feels and looks right, I'm gonna keep moving along. So what I'm doing is I started draping the fabric on my dress form and this draping created actually two dresses. Um, the one in this video and um, another one that I had in a separate video. Um, it's the long slip dress. If you've seen my videos, you know which one I'm talking about. It's the one with the side slits. I'll have the video in the description below if you want to check it out. Since this dress is symmetrical, I'm draping only one side of the dress form for the front and back dress pieces. And that's because I only need one side to transfer the design onto paper to make the flat pattern. As you can see, I transferred the drape fabric um, from the body form to my table and I'm now tracing out and making the flat sewing pattern. And I did this to finish the opposite side of the dress. And if I want to make this dress again, um, I'll have the pattern already made for next time. So after I traced and created the pattern, I verified the fit on my body form and made any corrections along the way. Next up, I color dyed the fabric using RIT dye and I created a custom color recipe which includes coral, cocoa brown, and sunshine orange. And with this color combination, I'm hoping to give the effect of faux suede. Um, so we'll have to see how it turns out. If you want different colors, you can go to the RIT um, website and you can choose amongst a lot of their color formulas. Um, it's a really neat website. You can scroll through and choose any color that you like. And once you find a color that you like, you can click on it and open it up and it'll um, show you recipes for whatever type of project that you're working on. Whenever I purchase fabric, my golden rule is to always launder it immediately. I like to pre-shrink and press my fabric. Um, that way it's ready whenever inspiration hits. And so if you plan on dyeing your fabric, you should always launder it first to remove any chemicals. And also a good tip is if you press to remove all of the wrinkles, the wrinkles will usually be less for each additional washing. And um, I tried that trick and it actually does work. It helps a lot. I'm not going to go into full detail on how to dye fabric in this video. Um, if you'd like one, um, let me know in the comments and I'll release a tutorial on how to dye fabric with RIT step by step. But for now, um, if you plan on color dyeing your fabric, you'll need dye and supplies of your liking. And you'll need to just for now uh, read the instructions on the RIT dye um, bottle if you decide to do a project for now. But uh, I chose RIT dye for this project and in the future um, I do plan on uh, using more earthy and natural products. I've already cut out dress pieces and the fabric had already been washed prior to draping and at this point the fabric is now ready to be color dyed 
and I usually cut out the pieces first so I won't waste fabric and since we're making a dress with exposed seams um, you don't want to serge or overlock the edges because we actually want the seams to be frayed so just leave them as they are After dyeing the fabric, I washed, dried, and trimmed the excess uh, frayed threads with scissors, and then I ironed out the wrinkles. To sew this dress, I used one yard of drop cloth, my self-draped sewing pattern, color-coordinated thread, my scissors, my pins, a tailor's chalk, a seam ripper, a sewing machine, and my serger, and I used a heavy-duty machine needle because I am using a medium weight. Uh, drop cloth. Since I don't have a pattern available for a download yet, you can easily make this dress by looking up um, shift dress sewing patterns. And you can easily find a shift dress with the seam in the front. But if you can't find one in the front, you can easily just cut right down into the center of the front and the back pieces. And then add half an inch or 2.5 centimeters for the seam allowance. Here I'm lining up the bust darts and marking it with my tailor's chalk and I drew on the bust dart outlines for the left and right pieces just to make it easier to sew. I folded each front and back piece in half, then I cut a straight line in the center to make two front and two back pieces. And guys, um, just to make it easier to cut a straight line, you can either um, fold the fabric in half and press it with an iron, or you can draw a line with Taylor's chalk and a ruler. Either way, it's super simple. Right here, I'm fixing to assemble the um, bust darts, and all I'm doing is uh, folding the dart outline that I had created and pressing it to have a fine, crisp, fold so when I sew it it's it's nice and neat now I'm pinning the darts together that way um, when I take it over to the sewing table it sews nicely and, and it's secured now we're going to sew the best dart and I usually start um, at the point of the triangle and I'll sew it all the way down to the side seam and I've seen other people do it the opposite way. They'll start with the wider triangle and sew up to the point. But I don't necessarily do that because I find it this way is easier for me. But it's preference. And uh, once you're finished sewing the bust start, you can um, go ahead and tie the long tail at the point of the bust start. And this knot will secure it and it'll keep the opposite side of the bust dart location from puckering and it makes it look really nice and put together and then once you're finished with that you'll go ahead and repeat it on the opposite side then once you're completed with both sides then you'll want to um, trim off the excess material or you can leave it alone and just press it with the steam iron and um, move on to the next step now starting from the bottom of the armhole, you'll need to overlock or serge the side seams on both sides of the front and back pieces. And you can zigzag stitch the side seams if you don't have a serger or an overlocker. But if you choose to use the zigzag method using the drop cloth, just remember that this fabric is prone to excessive fraying. And it's quite noticeable even with the zigzag stitch. And um, for those of you who like to use pinking shears, I just want to let you know if you are using the drop cloth, the pinking shears won't work with that. Uh, you'll then want to search the shoulder seams on the front and back pieces. So now what you'll want to do with the front center 
you'll want to attach the seams together exposing the um, the raw edge to the front and just pin along the entire front center and once you're finished with this you can move along to the back piece and do the same steps with the front piece, um, you'll want to sew along the seam allowance. I'm using a half inch seam allowance, or you can use a 2.5 centimeter seam allowance. And once you're finished with this, you can move on to the back piece and repeat the same steps. So now what you want to do is attach the side seams of the front and back dress pieces together. You'll want the right sides facing each other. So just pin it and sew along the side seam about a half inch or 2.5 centimeters. To prevent fraying any further, what you'll want to do is either do a straight stitch or a stay stitch around the neckline, the armholes, and the hem. And I did a half inch seam allowance, or you can do a 2.5 centimeter seam allowance. Then what you'll want to do is attach the shoulder pieces to the front and back. And you'll want to sew a half inch seam allowance or you can do a 2.5 centimeter seam allowance. So I tried the dress on and realized it was just a little bit longer than I wanted. So I went ahead and trimmed the edge of the hemline just a bit. And now what I'm going to do is continue to apply my straight stitch to the hemline. That way I can fray the edges and uh, the dress will be completed. And here's the results. I absolutely love this dress. It's so fun and playful to wear and, and it was so easy to make and I literally can sew this dress in under one hour, which is amazing. And it turns out that I actually saved $166.99 making this dress myself. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you back next week. We'll see you then. Bye.